So we start the game off uh, kind of without knowing too much context of what's going on, besides our strange message here is going. And uh, the beginning of the game is basically just sort of a walkthrough to some of the basic uh, controls and things like that. Of course, we have the whole suite of movement options and everything in the options setting. All kinds of different movement for all kinds of different players. We realize there's a lot of different types of people that like enjoy VR, and everyone's got their own needs. So we're happy to provide as many uh, sort of custom settings as we can. You can turn using the right button. For, I've got it on snap button, but I'm going to kind of keep it as smooth as I can for this video. There's our first real direction here. So using the A button to kind of clamber order to jump. I can use my grip buttons to pick up things in the world, all kinds of different rocks. I can release that grip button to throw things, make noise, cause distractions, whatever I need to do. These little things are called blights. These are sort of the uh, the, the conditions of the, of the things that are happening to you in the world. So as you get hunger, your hunger meter here, your blight wrists, or your blight meters are all here on your wrist. Uh, your hunger meter will fill up, showing you that you're basically at hunger capacity now. So as soon as this thing fills up, I'm going to start taking actual damage from being too hungry. So I can, again, pick up any food thing with my grip button, bring it to my face to eat, and you'll see that hunger meter go down a bit. Dead logs are a good place to find things like big mushrooms. They have more nutrition if they're cooked, but you can eat them raw as well, no problem. And you'll see those blights are lifting now. The green health kind of pops up, and my hunger's way down. So there's our weird friend, kind of beckoning me up to the top of this cliff up here. You see, as I stand in the water, my, my cold meter's gonna start to build up. So this water's frigid, so I'm gonna get out of that water, kind of continue on my way. So again, items. Pick it up with your grip button, and then you can hit either of the triggers to put it away. So now I've got a cloak, which is basically access to my inventory system. And I can open that at any time with the Y button. And I've got sort of capacity for all my regular items. I've got some special slots for special items down here, too. And then I've got uh, my two hand slots for both of my weapons. And these will actually give you sort of the recipe for what these are, because these are the most, these two are kind of the most important things for crafting and sort of surviving in the world. Um, and you can make those out of found objects in the world at any time. Up here we have kind of the, the temperature, how comfortable I am in this temperature, my body avatar, and there's some slots for clothing. And again, another rundown on my uh, on my blight system. And then I've got my, my small cloak placed in here, and I'm looking for a quiver now. Sounds like I'm not alone. And it sounds like a small berry looking here too. Get ahead of that. So now I have a map, and I can pick this up at any time I want. It's always going to give me kind of uh, relevant tips and tricks, and, and any sort of mission-specific tips will, will show up here as well. So for now, it just wants me to just follow the crow. And you can see the red triangle I'm sort of updating in real time here. So I always know which direction I'm heading and, and where kind of I need to go. Again, staying ahead of this. Clambering up these rocks. So this is, again, sort of walk me through some of the basics. So I use bones. I hit them with rocks to make a billet, which is our kind of main crafting tool. Usually you might need a bone or horn. And in turn, once I have my crafting billet, I can turn rocks into their sort of component parts. So I tap away at this, and I come up with an arrowhead. Once again, I can hit the trigger on both hands to put that stuff away. And it'll kind of give me a little brief summary of what I've done there, what I've picked up. Can I come up here and see where I came from a moment ago there? Now I can start keeping these, put them on my cloak and start stacking them up. At this point, with the small cloak, I can keep three of each of these regular items per slot. Bark fibers. 
So bright fibers are kind of the glue of this world, and they're essential for crafting. And bright fibers are created anytime you carve a stick, which you'll be doing quite a bit of. So these fibers are used for uh, simple crafting. Uh, there's there's better bindings we'll come across later, but these are always uh, kind of the baseline. And these are the base for making fires as well. So if I have bindings, which I do now, I can take an arrowhead and a bone and put them together. It shows the cost there and how many I have available. Let that go and I get my crafting knife. So this is really more of a tool for sort of uh, harvesting and, and doing things in the world. It's not really meant for combat, so I'll go ahead and put that away. There's our spooky friend. Looks like she wants us to keep cruising down this way. So with an item in hand, with a grip button, I just hit the trigger and I put these all into my cloak, save them for later. Here's the quiver I need. So this is what you use to keep your arrows in. There's three different sizes. They're made with uh, you know increasingly uh, tougher animal skins to get through the game. Uh, but this is my starter quiver, and now I can pick up arrows. Just getting a bit peckish here. Let's stay ahead of that. I'm going to just keep making my way through here. This is a good example that shows if I keep pressing forward to my left stick and I need to jump, it'll auto jump for me to get down to little places like that. We have a real-time day and night system here. You can see it's starting to get a little bit more towards the later afternoon here. And just sort of make my way up this river. Continue following my friend here. And you can see the cold again, once again, it's kicking in as I'm sort of standing in this freezing cold water. Luckily, I'm being given the mortar and pestle, which is another key component of crafting and sort of uh, survival in this game. So there's herbs scattered all over the game. Usually up on high ledges, they're a good thing to go looking for. But this warming herb, will basically help kill the problem with the cold. So I mash them up and I can drink them just like that. There's another way to hold them, I'll get into that later, but for now that's, the, that's all you need to know. And you can let this thing sit in your inventory or you can let it stay full of juice as well. So you've got something ready to go basically whenever you need it. So carving sticks with a knife. Again, all different types of sticks will turn into different kinds of components. You just take your knife and I carve along it, which gives me some bindings. Uh, and now I've got a torch handle. And with the torch handle, I can take these sparking stones that you'll find throughout the world. I've got two available bindings and one ready to go is all it takes. Let that go and now I've got a torch. So this is basically a giant match. The bindings will burn out. The stone will remain for quite a while, but the bindings will burn out fairly quickly. And I just need to strike it on a rock a couple times to get that torch going. You can see the eyes going down saying I'm showing some fatigue. I'm starting to get a little tired. So light uh, and, and really flame uh, in this game is pretty important. So uh, the first couple levels, it's, it's kind of gentle and you basically just need to maneuver and get around. Uh, but before too long, um, Avoiding dark places is going to become really critical, and I'm not going to spoil why, but you'll, you'll see. Mostly for staying warm and then finding your way around. But yeah, after night, after dark, it's definitely a, it's a different game. And there are things you need to go out into the dark for. Uh, and then, for the most part, though, you're going to want to stay inside. So water will put out my torch, obviously. Little debug text on that, don't mind that. But here's those sparking stones I was talking about. You can see these large sparking stones. You can pick one up whenever you know you see that. 
So basically, this is our campfire. So this is the only one that's pre-placed in the game, kind of uh, for the tutorial. Most of the time, you're going to be finding these rocks and placing these things yourself from the menu. And these fires are a big deal. They're a big part of this game. Um, you know, as sort of a camping simulator and a survival simulator, we wanted to go really deep into the physics of the stuff. We've had so much fun playing with the physics in this game. And so we want to make a real campfire simulator, which means that, you know, you can't just throw a match on a giant log and expect it to start burning. You've got to sort of build your fire up and spend some effort on it. So you've always got to have some bindings first. So these bindings and these bark fibers are basically kindling. There's a kindling mark there. So you always want to start with the kindling in the, in the fire pit. After that, you want to go for small sticks. A small stick thrown in there. Maybe one more. A medium stick too, why not? So at this point, I have enough in there to kind of get my fire going. And so I can use any two sticks or any two rocks in the game, but these sparking stones do kind of tend to, to work a lot faster. It's basically flint, so I can hit this a couple times, and there goes my fire. So I'm going to keep both these guys by hitting the trigger button again. And you can see this ring. This is kind of the fuel ring around the fire, showing how much fuel is in the fire and kind of what stage the fire is at. Each fire has basically three tiers of power and warmth and strength and everything. And so as this thing is building up, you can see I've got the small stick icon here. Once it builds up past the medium stick icon, I can start burning that medium stick. You see these guys have kind of a flaming shader on them. And this thing's not on fire yet. But it'll get there, as it's got enough stuff in there now. There it goes, right there. So now I'm up to the medium sticks, and it's going to start burning these medium sticks. So I'm going to go grab a couple more medium sticks. Throw this large down here. These extra large sticks uh, can be burned as is, but it's better, really, to grab them with both hands and hold your grip button down, and you can break these into their components, which are the medium and the small. So now this fire is cooking along pretty well. At this point, I can take my large stick, and I can throw this on here. I've pretty much got enough fuel for the night at this point. So what I can do is, you'll see my fatigue is building up over the course of the day. I'm getting tired here. And this message is prompting me to relieve the fatigue by selecting sleep from your cloak menu. So when you're near a campfire, there's some contextual stuff that'll pop up that's only available near a campfire, these guys here. So the sleep thing will relieve me of my exhaustion. And you'll see my time stone here, the, the sun going down. This fire is gonna go out, that's okay, because there's not much here to hurt me and I'm warm enough. But normally you're gonna need to keep that stoked all night, but you can wake up with any button uh, and, and wake yourself up. So now it's prompting me that I can save your journey to the campfire. So this is really important. You can only save your journey at campfires. You can place a maximum of three campfires per stage. So uh, kind of keep a track where those are and how sort of, you know, convenient they are to other ones. And kind of planning your campsites is going to be kind of really important. And at this point, I can save my game. I choose my slot and save game. Overwrite the game. There we go. So you can see the small sticks are burned out. The medium sticks are kind of burned. You can see them getting black here. And this large stick really didn't uh, take too much uh, heat damage. There's our friend. And it looks like there's a couple things that I need to come check out over here. And it looks like one is right there, this, this smaller, closer one. So this is kind of where the game starts to open up just a little bit here. This is too far to jump down this far. You can always see the, the red indicator basically means it's just too far to jump and you won't be able to. So I'm going to turn back around the way I came and head over here. So I'm always be picking up as much firewood as I can hold, basically. And this comes to our another real herb. So this is a health herb. This is kind of the health, you know, language of the game. These guys can be mashed up in your, in your mortar and pestle at any time. And once I start to take damage, you'll see my green health meter start to take red. I can drink this. I can just sip on it, really, and uh, it'll kind of start to heal away that, that damage. So I'm just going to leave this here in my cloak so I can have it anytime I need it. Again, dead logs, mushrooms, time for breakfast. No problem. So you can hear the singing now. And look, there's another one of those indicators. So this singing is kind of these stones. We call them the singing stones. And the singing stones need to be found. All three of them need to be found per stage before you can sort of unlock the next chapter. So as you hear that singing, that distinctive singing, you'll know you're close to a stone that you need to find. 
This is again proud for me to say it there. And there's some creepy little characters here. They seem to be beckoning me deep into this cave. I don't know if I can trust them, what's going on. But it looks like we found our first singing stone here. So all I need to do is come up to it and hit my grip button to activate it. The stone calls out for its fellows. All right. So I'm gonna just sort of follow that. And I'm gonna go look for that second stone, which is up there on that on that ridge up there. Looks like there's fish in here, but I don't have any way to catch them yet. I'll have to worry about that later. Get out of the water. My cold should go right back down pretty quickly as soon as I get out. And these early phases, or these early stages, it's warm enough that I don't need clothing. But, you know, before too long, I'll need to strap up some clothing to stay warm as the stages get progressively cooler. So here's that second singing stone. I'm going to climb up here. And release this one, too. Look for the shadow of great wings. Well, we know who that's talking about, don't we? She's going to go all the way up there. And that looks like that's the third stone up there. Looks like this is probably the best path up that way. Again, grabbing all the wood I can on the way. Looks like there's another tip up here. More wood. Carve sticks with the knife to make weapon components. This one conveniently is a tier three stick. I can tell by the three rocks or the three, the three teeth on it, showing this is a, one of the top tier sticks available. I'm gonna carve this. And that turns into a bow stick. Looks like they've got a gift for me here. So the guts, the dried guts of animals that you slaughter uh, can be dried and turned into these bow strings, which gives you a, a functional bow. Now, this game's a little different uh, in that you don't take your arrows and manually load them. You put them away and they auto-populate in your quiver here. So I've got six slots on this starter quiver. And once I have an arrow in the quiver, I can move on to this little archery challenge here. I've got one, uh, one arrow, which is marked here. I can see the one arrow is accounted for here. I bring my hand up close and I pull the trigger and it auto kind of grabs the, the arrow. And I can pull this back and shoot into this arrow, this archery challenge, which usually gives me uh, a bunch of arrows as a present. And these are fully fledged with the arrowheads and the uh, feathers on them. Okay, I'm ready for action. Oh, I almost forgot. I need to put my bow on my hand slot so I have it available just by hitting the trigger to pull it up anytime I need. Longer again. Some more of our little friends. sweet view up here. She's rattling at me to get going. And here's that last thing that's going Trace this song to its source. I bet you she's going to lead the way.
direction. Oh, there she goes. Down to that big rock. Okay, I can find my way down there again. that as I get closer she's gonna pick this massive rock up and open up this portal of sorts to the next level which is called hunting grounds I walk into the flames and off I go